Hi there friends and welcome to the tutorial set. I'm Icon and this is my new video series specially designed for people who are new to the cultivation world and just want to enjoy that game. In this series I will guide you step by step through everything from the beginning on and I'm going to explain as thorough as I can what you need to do to get this game rolling for you. We're going to start with the game creation and then we're going to probably make a pretty slow progress with every element because this game is very deep and I'll do my best to explain as much as I have to and as little as necessary because I don't want to spoil you too hard. This is also a goal of the series. This is meant to give you an impression how to master this game. I don't want to give away every little secret in this game, although you will learn a few tricks here and there, which I have acquired over my time in the cultivation world. So before we start, I want to talk about the fact that I run a modded version of this game. I only use mods which add informations into the user interface, and I'm going to talk about when they interact with the game as good as I can. You will find all the mods in the description box below and there's only one mod which alters the gameplay in a way and that's the one click favor mod. I'm going to talk about that once we get there. Now after that's been out of the way I hope you are following me now into this wonderful journey. We're going to start out with, with a game creation here. So here we have basically what I would call the difficulty settings. You can configure your game however you want to we will only do two th uh, two things maybe a little bit more but mainly two things and that's increasing the size of the world because this is your home map and there's practically no use in playing on a medium map you're just uh, denying yourself out of a few resources and you also have less room to build with. Basically a smaller map size is just a challenge. The higher the map size the easier. Just my few thoughts. Beyond that I would really recommend you to not touch these settings because this is just a normal plain gameplay which is uh, difficulty wise totally okay and when you want when you are ready for a challenge check out the immortal mode that's where you can't save your game anymore and the difficulties as you see here are by default on max so there is enough uh, challenge in this game but if you're new here just go for a large map and if you want to check out the edit button on the environment you can try out different biomes here this is basically the most uh, beginner compatible thing the other things that you can configure here are legacies and monsters i would not recommend you to touch them but be my guest in the sandbox game so it's your world go crazy but in short words the plains map is really good for starting out every other biome here features a different challenge or a different circumstance but overall we're going to play planes and a overall mediocre setting or medium setting because i feel like that's the best for tutorial purposes okay before we get to actually play the game we get a little bit of an information what has happened before because you are playing the remaining survivors of a destroyed cultivation site. If you are new to the whole topic and you don't want to dive too deep into it, you can roughly look at this like these uh, cultivation people, they are like Eastern mages. I've personally felt like if I, if I translated this all into magic and chi into mana it worked out perfectly so basically you're you're playing a uh, a formation of immortal mages in an eastern setting this is a gross simplification and i i uh, i i speak out my excuses to all the cultivation fans out there but i just wanted to give you a summary if you're totally new to the topic there's of course way more to that and uh yeah so here we see our character starting creation uh, scene over here the skills of the people over here their well their physical status so you have here on this wheel the six stats of a person perception constitution charisma intelligence luck 
and potential while potential is a kind of a uh, artificial stat which is a accumulation of these five so basically your characters have five stats and potential is like the quintessence of these five above that well you have traits and all these things which you are used to if you play these games more often i personally want to emphasize that the most important things are here that the first character is your sect leader basically this guy has to pick perks too and the other two people here are well your first uh, disciples pupils if you want to say so so the most tuning you should put into this character especially with the stats of course it is also pretty good to try and aim for really good stats this guy has pretty good stats on your other people because basically every every one of your pupils can turn into a fully fledged uh, cultivator which is well your way to immortality the difference between a actual cultivator and immortal is insane in this game so you might want to try and max out these three people or you want to max out only one person and get to new people later i will for the sake of the simplification only focus on maxing out my main character and leave these two guys on a practical side although i have to say once you understand more about this game it's really a good idea to roll the hell out of these three people to have really three powerful characters to start with but this would lead too far and is by no means necessary and i think suboptimal choices are pretty good to demonstrate you some problems you will run into if i do everything perfectly here there's not much tutorial to do after all <laughs> after i'm done also we take forever so really important here is that you check out the race uh, button here there's so-called yaogai in this game yaogai translates roughly into beast people and simply said don't touch them if you're new to this game yaogai are beast people with awesome stats and everything is nice and dandy but they come with an expiration date once they hit that expiration date they turn into a monster if they don't if they don't manage to withstand the wrath the wrath of the heavens because basically the heavens are angry for them turning sentient it's another story but long story short if they don't pass that uh, test of the heavens they turn into a wild monster ready to destroy your sect therefore if you're completely new to the game don't touch yao guy as starting characters because you have to work towards their uh, their test of the heavens basically it's not that hard to pull off but it's too much for a beginner <laughs> So we're going to start at least with a human-only party here for the sake of simplification. We will pick up Yaogai in the course of the series, of course, uh, uh, of course, though. So you will, we will cover up that topic too. So now we're going to start to randomize. For your people that are meant to be cultivators, there's one stat which is really, really uh, tremendously important, and that's Chi Sense. Chi sense determines how much chi a character can have and basically well translated into mana your maximum mana pool if you are a full a main class mage you want to have as much mana as possible <laughs> i know this is a little bit of a uh, weird simplification but i personally felt like everything was a lot more simple once i translated it to myself like that so the other stats are not that super important if your character is meant to be a cultivator because once you're uh, tuning into the cultivation you will stop working so all these labor and uh, other things are more and more meaningless there's one thing though which is important the social stat is important if you are not playing with this uh, social interaction override mod which i'm using a ton so the other stats here battle magic and magic crafting are also important um easily easily said battle is important if you want to create a fighter magic is important if you want to create a spellcaster and magic crafting is a really good stat if you want to have people that actually craft and create things so if you just want to start out with a character i think she's a pretty good uh she's a pretty good start for us she has decent stats 
just try to have nothing be um, tremendously below five in this uh, setting, she's very unlucky. So this is, as a matter of fact, very bad. But well, we're going to. Are you going to roll that further? No, I'm not going to roll that further. So we're going to keep her as she is because I feel like she's exactly with enough uh, downsides that I don't mind using her at all. So now the other people. As you see here, we have a lot of jobs. Mining, farming, construction, crafting. All these things are quite important. Checking out this dude here, I'm really happy with his uh, overall spread. He's a little bit of everything with an emphasis on mining. Let's check out what we have here. Well, pretty, uh, pretty okay on construction. These stars, though, are, well, the passions, which are, well, a learning improver. You would be uh, surprised how uh, how similar this all feels to RimWorld if you played the Rim. You already played RimWorld. No, you wouldn't be surprised, but you know what I mean. So we're going to re-roll re them a little bit though, because I want to have one person which is really good at construction. Oh, I think I re-rolled somebody there who was better than that, but whoops. So overall, try to have high stats. And passions there. Oh yeah, this this guy is good. Passion on farming is really good because farming really needs a high stat. And I personally recommend you to have at least one good farmer and one good uh, constructor at the during the beginning of the game because that really helps you out a lot. Because farming is pretty effective once your sect grows a little bit larger for the sake of food production and the uh, other things well construction goes without saying here I take somebody with a certain crafting passion because that's really really useful too so we are at a point where we can start out these other people have not too much chi sense so they are not really uh, well fit cultivation material if I would personally uh, try to min max this gameplay I would definitely try to have a higher luck rating but more about that later I'll explain that down there down the road so we're going to now check out the perks you have five perk points to start with and these are, well, defining your background. There's one thing which is really important, and now we introduce the next part. The <clears throat> first 12 of these are your law. How to translate that? That's your main path of magic. So you decide which main path of magic your character will follow, and you can only select one of these 12, or 11, sorry. And as you see here, you get this display there, and usually you won't have that. There's uh, there's the mod which uh, is called Show Law Stats, which does that because I personally like to see how good they are fit for that. And if you're new to the game, this is an insane help. You see here the match and the percentile segment. We want to have a uh, as high match as possible because this match here is basically giving you a feedback on how good this character is fit for this uh, law and as we see here there's only one law where we are at, uh, are at 88 percent so i was actually wrong this is uh, not a good character at all so we have to re-roll here again you should aim to get above a 100 percent uh, law match at the beginning because at the end of the day your main character it ought to be there the whole gameplay. So if you are rolling a uh, bad character at the beginning, you will be stuck for that until the end of the game unless you pick up a certain somebody who will step into his shoes, but you will never ever get into the position again where you can roll that freely, how that character is uh, put together. And therefore I can't uh, recommend it enough to you to just re-roll here until you have a good uh, uh, set of stats. So since I have now explained everything uh, enough, I will put this video on pause until I have rolled out a character which I'm happy with and then we're going to continue with the explanations. And here we go. This is our going to be our character which we roll the game with. The stats are really high, the chi sense could be higher, battle is very high and she's a very good fit for the Plo Disciple. I personally would 
strongly recommend you to go either for the Plo Disciple as a beginner <clears throat> or the True Sun Disciple. True Sun is a spellcaster law and Plo Disciple, um, this is the Grand Chariot law, is a fighter law. So as you see here, we have a high battle rating. We have a high chi sense. Crafting could be better, the magic crafting one, but I'll, I'll accept that. Okay, so we have that now done, and now we have to choose the other perks because we have some more perk points left. The other laws which you can buy for five points are so-called advanced laws. They are more powerful, and well, this only makes sense when you're already when you already have some experience with the game. For now, it's good enough to know that this guy, this uh, law is a fighter law. And this law is a magic law, and well, the other uh, beginners things. Oh well, now we're going to talk about it anyways. Well, that's okay. So the other laws are more flexible, where you can select your set by your by your skill selection which kind of path you take therefore they are more complex to go for and not a good recommendation for beginners so with the other perks you can here pick up if you want to have more disciples or well less disciples and more perk points and all these things what we're going to take here is uh, the student of elixirs because we will get some uh, extra healing skill, magic crafting skill increase, and we're also getting some extra medicinal resources. There's, of course, a lot of other things, but the good news here is there's nothing which is really, really uh, tremendously important to have. I'm going to also pick up the Swordsman here because this increases her artifact mastery, and I think that's a quite fitting choice. Well, we could also pick up, of course, other things. Well chi barrier let's take that one this could be useful later okay we are done now with the uh, beginning screen there is a ton to tweak here a, seriously a ton and there's also the reincarnation uh, feature which allows you to use pre-rolled and prefabricated characters but this would go too deep so i'm pretty sure you will return to the screen quite often and try to get the best out of that. But for now, we have a character with a high chi sense or high enough. Above 30 is good for beginners. And a couple of people which are good at mining and farming. And somebody who's good at construction and crafting. The rest will come together on the road. So let's finally start the game. I'm sorry about this well, about this very long explanation, but it was absolutely necessary to get the ball rolling. So you see here now, this is our law screen. As you see here, these are the, the five laws I was talking about. And there's a lot of question marks for unlockable things. Yes, this is uh, all, all quite uh, deep. So we're going to roll this. This is basically something you can ignore. The screen only shows you the law you started with and here we are finally, finally at the game. So now let's explain the user interface a little bit. Up here you see your people, up there you see the season, the temperature and you have the, the controls over the time. Here we have the elements diagram, this will be later important and most important for now is the command bar down here and we have a mini map here uh, please turn that on whenever you whenever you can for some reason there's no default option to to turn that on so <clears throat> we have all our stuff lying around here and we have a build menu when you start out your people have escaped from the destruction of their home sect magic guild however you want to call it and the only thing you can do is build a bonfire at the beginning. You have a couple of resources here, depending on your starting uh, setup. But the first thing to do is just to build a bonfire and place it down. These lines you're seeing here are not standard on, stand, uh, on a standard uh, enabled setting. You can activate them here in the settings menu with the uh, construction grid uh, check mark. I personally like that to create uh, angles and things at times, but yeah. Okay, so we have now 
place down a command to build a campfire. In this game, we have a work schedule, uh, a work order tab, and here you see the kind of work the disciples will do. If you are familiar to base builder games, this will be uh, totally intuitive to you, but I'll explain it to everybody who's new to that. So here you see a check mark, a box check mark system, whether or not somebody will do the job or not. So as we see here, when we mouse over that, we get a uh, number, which is the skill rating of that person. These stars depict whether or not a character has a passion for that. And if we mouse over these boxes, we also see what kind of work these things are related to. So things are being worked off from a left to right order, which means first we check if there's fire, then we check if there's somebody to heal, and with every button we enable or disable, we tell our people whether or not they should check if they do the job. I didn't bring up a good chef here, which is uh, kind of a shame, but really important about some jobs is some jobs should only be done by one person. For example, healing should be al always done with the highest skill rating because the higher the rating, the better the outcome. And this is true for a lot of things. With an exception for healing, never have only one healer because if your healer is down, somebody has to heal the healer. So for the building, we enable that one too. Mining, we enable that too. I personally have a policy that passionate people always get to do what they're passionate at. And another thing which is quite important, crafting, like smithing, tailing, ta uh, smithing and tailoring should only be done by people which are meant to be good at that because here again, the quality of the skill is also determining the quality of the output. Logging is a job which can be done by pretty much everybody, but because wood is a totally vital resource at the beginning, and well, we're going to assign everybody to a builder job too, except for this guy. This is the job which is uh, basically hauling, and one of your characters should definitely be doing that at some point in the game. Back here in that uh, box, we can also tell them to prioritize one job. This will lead to a behavior of that character. For example, Bijen would now only be trying to do these, these tasks here until they are done, before he will get to another job. So with these tools, you can distribute the work in your uh, sect. The real problematic thing there is you can't tell your people to do something really manually. The only controls you have are whether to equip or eat something, to attack somebody, to move somewhere, but you don't have any uh, particular way to tell this person to build that campfire or to tell this person to work at this bench. The game doesn't work like that. So we place down that uh, command. Let's see what will happen. Let's speed up the game for uh, for once, and now they uh, get over there and start working. So we have our first event, a mysterious immortal is arriving. This guy is basically a friend of your old sect, and he arrives here, promises you to provide you some safety. Basically this guy will defeat everything which is uh, heading towards your sect in the first couple of days. It's really, really good to know that because at the beginning you can basically attack everything on the map. It doesn't matter. So now we have built a bonfire and now we unlocked a few things because we have now settled down. So the bonfire is our first uh, workbench where we can actually produce something, which follows like this. Here we have a... Down here you see the kind of item you can produce. Like at the bonfire we can do dried meat and you click at it and then it gets up here and you see now there's a order for that stuff and as soon as somebody who's uh, linked to that kind of work is free he will get over to the campfire and start doing that we have a little bit of rabbit meat and you see bijen is my uh, cook and now it's going to try and fulfill that uh, job as soon as possible and now he's cooking something. This uh, method is uh, how you craft everything in this game. 
that's why I am showcasing it as early as possible, because this is how you craft things in this game. You make sure that the job is allocated in the work menu to the right person, and then you place down the work order at the uh, actual bench by opening the produce me menu and clicking it. And then there's a couple of things which are worth mentioning though. This little arrow here is a repeat arrow where you can tell the game to loop things a certain amount of times and you can also right click the things to tell the recipe to use a certain specific material. This works with pretty much everything in the game. So therefore, lesson learned. Of course our people can't live just under the free sky forever. So the first things you have to do is to set up camp. You need to bring up a roof over everybody's head and you have to bring up a working survivability for the whole sect. So we're going to start out with building a couple of structures here. As you see, there's uh, the basics. We have walls, roofs, and doors here, fences, which we don't need for now. And there's now a lot of things that showed up. The game's uh, building menu is a little bit wacky and uh, it did cost me some time to, to grow accustomed to it. So don't be uh, don't be worried if it confuses you. This game's not called Am Amazing Confusion Simulator for no reason. So over here in the life tab, we see stuff like beds and tables to eat from, water vats, and here we have workbenches. This is where we're going to head to now first. So the first things we need are a workplace where we can actually craft things and a material workplace where we can refine materials. As soon as we can, we want to put up a timber station because at this place we can uh, process timber effectively. So we're going to place that down. And now we have a little bit of a, of a job down again. The timber station and the material workplace share their recipes. You can refine wood into timber at the material workplace or at the timber station. But if you check out here, the timber station produces five timber and the material workplace only three, which means this thing, proper tools, more yields, this thing, bad tools, less yields. So we're going to chop down a pine tree here to give you guys a uh, idea how this works. And here's the first thing. You see this woman is actually punching that tree. These people need tools to uh, avoid that. So you start out with one person, uh, with one uh, logging ax so for the sake of the safety of the people's hands we're going to uncheck the logger job now from everybody except from her for her because this uh is actually a high chance to hurt yourself if you do that but at the end of the day these guys are the kung fu of these guys is so strong they can even punch down trees so we have now gained 18 wood which we are now transforming into timber here going to loop that 10 times because you see materials required one wood transforms into five timber yes please so that's how you produce wood and that's how you produce pretty much every resource we do need the material workplace though to also refine stones and since i don't have a uh, way to build the stone work right now where you would refine stones better. I felt like I wanted to have that or and at least have this also to showcase you how this works. So now we have resources. We can produce food. And what we now need is housing. So we're going to place down structures. I'm going to place down two structures here. One house for the outer disciples and one house for the upcoming inner disciple, a.k.a. the boss of the uh, of the sect. So we're going to place down the door here. I'm going... there's... this game is very specific with the placement of doors. Simply said, sleeping rooms need their doors on the southern side. 
I'm going to explain why in a, another episode because I can't uh, complete this topic now real quickly. So here we build up this uh, new room and with the given materials we should be having no problem to get that done. I'm going to place down another uh, blueprint here for a smaller room which is going to be a one-person apartment which is going to be the boss's apartment. All right, let's speed up the time a little bit and let them run. There's one more very, very, very important thing which you need to build very early on, which killed me several times, and that's the well. Without a well, your people don't have access to water. And as you see here, you start out with 30 units of water, but if you uh, forget to build the well in time, you will die. I'm going to chop down that ginkgo tree here now too, because we seem to need more timber. So let's, uh, re let's put that uh, back online. Don't refine all your timber at once though, because this uh, stuff has more uses than that. And the first night, our disciples sleep on the ground. It's not really bad to sleep on the ground for a night. Nobody will die from that. So don't you worry too much. The bull here with this uh, red name shows you that he's a dangerous animal, a aggressive animal if you want to, if you want so. He won't attack your people on his own, but if you attack him, he will fight back. So we're going to use this uh, now. Because, you know, I still have my friend, the Mysterious Cultivator, here. So let's go into the attack. This target is not an enemy, but we're going to do it anyway. So now she goes over there, and the fight starts. And the moment she gets attacked by the bull, the Mysterious Cultivator shoots his artifact at this monster and ends the fight. With this little trick, we just uh, gained ourselves a little bit of food to begin with. So my people, after hunting them made bull hide and bull meat out of that which is really good so all this stuff here can be placed into a storage area so let's place that down area designators and let's draw a little storage area below that now you see there's uh, this, these borders here and now my people will take all the items which are just lying around and put them here into the storage zone with the filter button, you can set up the uh, the rules for that storage area. By default, storage areas accept everything, which is not the worst because at the end of the day, you uh, need you need a uh, generic storage zone to begin with. Okay, as you see, once these walls are closed, there's uh, a roof over that. Now let's chop that tree. And you see, now with that uh, axe, the job gets done more easily. Ginkgo trees always yield um, some ginkgo fruit on top of that. And now we're going to put down a bed in this room and two beds in this room. At the beginning, try to make all your uh, things out of the same material. Don't mix materials without knowing what you're doing, please. So what happened here is the game had a stutter and didn't uh, take the blueprint for the last wall. Sometimes that happens. So now you see we don't have seem to have materials for roofs and such. This comes because we don't have a handcraft station yet. But I'd say for the start of a series we did a pretty good uh, job. You have now understood how to create characters and what you should take care of at the beginning. This is all a little bit lengthy and bulky, but believe me when I say that it's really necessary to get the ball rolling down the road. And I I was thinking a lot of time if I should include the character creation into this uh, tutorial or not, but I figured it is pretty important to give you a few markers and give you a helping hand to understand. Because basically, if you do not create your characters well at the beginning, you will suffer in a very, very long road and eventually have to restart if you're uh, really unlucky because your character has not the potential to, to get into the late game. This is all fixable by picking up other characters, but I just wanted to uh, put down the thought process behind this decision. Okay, end of episode one. 
In the next episode, I'm going to talk about how to establish crafting. We're going to put up the sect as a more bustling place and probably I'm going to start with the whole cultivation topic in this episode too. Maybe not. Maybe it will be episode 3 when we start actually cultivating. Can't promise. Thank you so much for watching. Drop your comments down below. If you have questions towards these topics, feel free to ask away. And leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed your show here. And of course, check out my channel. I do daily videos, so you might want to subscribe and turn on those notifications to not miss anything in the future. In the description box, there's not only the mod links, but also my Twitch channel where I do daily streams, or at least try to. And beyond that, there's also links for support of my project. If you might want to check them out, I'd be more than happy. And if not, just let me thank you one more time for watching. This is the greatest form of support. So, have a good time and see you guys next episode for more amazing Confusion Simulator. Goodbye.